Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Our goal in this segment is to take the first steps toward mastery of an understanding of water, the solvent of all biochemistry. And in this segment, we're going to particularly talk about uh, the structure of water, how it dissolves things, solvation as it's called, and something called colligative properties, which we'll come to at the end of the segment. So remember the status of biochemistry. It's the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle that unifies the chemical and physical world with the biological world. And water, as we've said, is the solvent in which virtually all biochemistry goes on. We won't talk any more about it today, but the, the, the tools that, that organisms build, pro mostly proteins, can occasionally create a little tiny micro sequestered environment away from water and allow an organic reaction to go on in the absence of water as needed. But in fact, that's a fairly rare uh, event. Most biochemistry is goes on in an, in an aqueous environment. In fact, we can talk about biochemistry mostly as the as a specific subset of organic chemistry that goes on in water. So let's talk first about the structure of water. And as we talk about the structure of water as a solvent, there's a tendency to think of the solvent as kind of fading into the background and the interesting stuff going on in the solvent. Uh, and to some extent that's true, but also the properties of water turn out to be properties shared with the biochemical molecules that we're going to care a lot about later. So as we understand the property of water as a solvent, we're also taking the first step toward understanding biochemical molecules. In fact, in a very real sense, water is a biochemical molecule, as you'll see over and over again going forward. So this uh, diagram is just to emphasize to you that, that water, we live on a water planet. Uh, the vast majority of the surface of the uh, planet is covered by water. Life evolved in water. And so it's not at all surprising that, the, uh, that most biochemical reactions are designed to go on in water. And in fact, in seawater. So the, we won't talk about it today, but the, the uh, uh, salt concentration of the cytoplasm of cells is remarkably similar to the salt concentration of seawater. Again, not a big surprise. All right, so this is a diagram of the whole picture of a water molecule. In the center is this traditional ball and stick uh, diagrams to emphasize the spatial relationships of molecules, and then surrounding the clouds in blue and red, blue for hydrogen, in this case red for oxygen, are the uh, so-called van der Waals radii. These are the, uh, the uh, dimensions of the uh, electron shell such that when two water molecules approach, and their electron shells uh, 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 when they get to the point that their electrostatic repulsion between their electron shells is over is overwhelming, stopping further uh, migration together, you have encountered that is the definition of the van der Waals radii. In most of the diagrams, subsequently, we're going to look at ball and stick. Uh, 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 diagrams of uh, water molecules. But remember that the, the van der Waals radii are, al are already there, or are always there, and we'll call them back from time to time where they're relevant. So this is a, a step toward a ball and stick model. This is a water molecule with the uh, um, electrons in the bonding external bonding orbitals diagrammed. So there's a there, there's six in the external uh, uh, orbitals of uh, oxygen. So to create the magic number of eight, uh, they uh, can share one electron with each of two hydrogen atoms, as is diagrammed here at the bottom. And then they have two unbonded electron pairs diagrammed at the top here. And let's go through that. So oxygen is strongly electronegative. What that means is that it tends to attract electrons to itself and away from the less electronegative atoms to which it is bound, of which hydrogen is a dramatic in specific example. Again, let me emphasize something I said a moment ago. This property of electronegativity, pulling electrons to one atom in a bonded a molecule and away from another, is a generic property of many, many biological molecules. So as we study it in water, we're learning also uh, concepts that we're going to apply over and over again. And then again, the, here are the uh, unbonded electrons boxed in green at the top. So let's look now at the consequences of water to the structure of water as a solvent of the strong electronegativity of oxygen uh, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, holding on disproportionately to electrons in water molecules. So here are two water molecules. Water molecules are polar, as we've said. Here are the two oxygens in the molecule. So this is a slightly simplified diagram compared to the one you saw a moment ago. Here are the unbonded electron pairs that you saw again a moment ago. And these green arrows represent the pulling of electrons toward the oxygen atom and away from the hydrogen atoms because, again, of the electronegativity of oxygen. That th th creates, therefore, small partial positive charges on hydrogen and small partial negative charges on oxygen in a water molecule. Okay? So 
as a result of that, water molecules have the capacity to, to form what is called a hydrogen bond. It is essentially like an ionic bond. A small positive charge is attracted to a small negative charge, but the hydrogen uh, uh, atom is particularly efficient at providing at, at, at um, in becoming involved in this kind of bond, and therefore it's often referred to as a hydrogen bond. Again, for the third time, hydrogen bonds are formed by many biological molecules. They are central, as we'll see, to the structure of biological molecules. So we're, while we're learning about water today, we're also learning about some principles that are going to be crucial to the understanding of biological molecules as well. As you'll see, several other of the abundant elements in organisms, specifically nitrogen and sulfur, are also electronegative like oxygen. And so in fact, biological molecules that have oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur will often uh, form hydrogen bonds under the appropriate circumstances. More about that in later segments. Today our focus is oxygen and water. Okay. That is a hydrogen bond between two water molecules. In fact, water molecules can often form as many as three hydrogen bonds simultaneously. And understanding that in turn helps us understand a great deal about the properties of water as a solvent. Let's first consider solid water and the fact that ice floats. And that's a little surprising, right? In general, when we drop a solid object of some sort into a glass of water, usually we expect it to sink. Water, ice does not. It floats. Why? Because, in fact, ice is lighter. The solid form is lighter than the liquid form. How does that work? Well, in fact, ice, the water molecules in ice form a highly orderly lattice structure. So liquid water, the molecules are moving around in ways that we'll talk about in a moment. As you withdraw thermal energy from them by cooling them, you eventually traverse the freezing point and they collapse into this lattice structure diagrammed on the image that you're looking at uh, on the screen uh, at the moment. Uh, that highly orderly structure has some air in it, so to speak, some space in it. Uh, uh, the orderly molecules are held apart from one another a little bit uh, beyond their van der Waals radii uh, on average because of the formation of these highly ordered structures. If we start pumping more heat energy back in, the molecules start vibrating more rapidly and eventually when the melting point is reached, they break apart and they form liquid water. A little bit of that is diagrammed here. Individual water molecules form and break uh, hydrogen bonds with their neighbors, but they're now doing it in kind of a, 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 an insane three-dimensional square dance where they form and break hydrogen bonds with their neighbors very rapidly. In fact, on a nanoscale uh, time scale. So these uh, movement of molecules at uh, even at room temperature at the molecular scale is quite more violent than we're used to thinking of. That will rarely concern us here directly, but it's a, it's a kind of interesting fact to know. So as liquid molecules now are going through this three-dimensional square dance, forming and breaking in real-time hydrogen bonds with one another, it means that at certain moments in time, two water molecules can bump closer than they would if they were fully hydrogen bonded in a lattice, bumping up against their van der Waals radii, and therefore liquid water is about 9% denser than ice, and ice floats, which is a useful thing uh, in a number of contexts. Our concern at the moment, though, is now how liquid water acts as the solvent in which virtually all biochemistry occurs. And we're going to start by looking at the how water interacts with things that don't like to go into solution of water, the so-called hydrophobic effect. We'll come back later to hydrophilic molecules that like to go into solution in water, but let's begin with hydrophobic. We do this because the physical chemistry is interesting uh, more generally, but more importantly, because the hydrophobic effect, a very simple effect, the interaction of a molecule with water, is responsible for an enormous fraction of the structure of the macromolecules and biological system. So the structure of DNA, the structure of proteins, the structure of lipid membranes, for example, are, are all dependent on the interaction of those molecules with water and particularly with the so-called hydrophobic effect. So as we go through this, if it seems a little esoteric or beside the point, precisely the contrary is true. This is the hydrophobic effect is central to all uh, macromolecular structure in biochemistry. So let's start with a simple case. This is a, um, a, a diagram of a benzene molecule. You remember that benzene, the, uh, some of the uh, bonding electrons delocalize around the ring, and so you get a rigidly planar structure in which the carbons and the surrounding hydrogen molecules are pulled into this rigid plane. Notice also that carbon and hydrogen are comparably electronegative. So carbon is not pulling I say again, not pulling electrons off of oxygen, I'm sorry, off of hydrogen. Mm -hmm.